students today we'll see the third part of the spotters of head and neck osteology i hope uh, the last two sessions were useful for you in this session also we'll see five questions and uh, the related questions so the first question is identify the colored bone and the circled region and uh, the second part of this question is mention two importances of the circled region so the colored bone as you all know this is the parietal bone and the circled region is the parietal tuber we have seen that the parietal tuber or the parietal tuberosity is the most prominent region of the parietal bone and it has got many significances some of them are here it marks the beginning of ossification of bone so that means the ossification of the parietal bone starts from the parietal tuber then this occupies the maximum distance of the interparietal diameter so when you measure the distance from the one parietal bone uh, to the other parietal bone that is connecting the two parietal tubers the maximum distance is occupied by the parietal tuber then it also acts as a reference point for surface anatomy that means if you want to uh, mark a point you can say this point is uh, such and such centimeters from the parietal tuber like that you can measure so you can say this is a reference point for surface anatomy one more point you have to remember regarding the significance of parietal tuber uh, see in this diagram the red line represents the lateral sulcus and the posterior ramus of the lateral sulcus of the brain terminates with an upturned end and then that is surrounded by the supra marginal gyrus so you can see the green circle over there so that represents uh, that acts as a wernicke sensory speech area so this region is seen beneath the parietal tuber so along with the other three significances you can write this point also as this is seen just beneath the parietal tuber the next question is identify the given bone and the area pointed with red arrow the second part of this question is name the bones reducing the pointed area in articulated skull so the given bone is maxilla and the this is the right maxilla and you can see the hiatus or the large opening is marked with the red arrow and that is known as the maxillary hiatus in an articulated skull the maxillary hiatus is reduced by some bones so the bones that reduce from above are unsnared process of ethmoid descending process of lacrimal bone from below by the maxillary process of inferior nasal concha and from behind by the maxillary process of perpendicular plate of palatine bone so this is a frequently asked question so please learn all the four bones that reduce the maxillary hiatus in living or in an articulated skull the next question is identify the pointed area which is marked by yellow arrow and the given bone write the clinical significance of the pointed area so uh, you know that this is the fetal skull so please have a look at the video on fetal skull that i have already taken and this region is the pointed region is anterior fontanelle you know that these are membranous gaps and the anterior fontanelle is of diamond shaped outline so what are the significances of the anterior fontanelle it helps in age determination of the child the anterior fontanelle among the other fontanelles this is the last one to close that means it closes by 18 months to 2 years so if it persists after 2 years that denotes that the child is having uh, some calcium metabolism deficiency due to any deficiency of vitamin d so the age determination is very important by palpation of anterior fontanelle another thing is that if there is abnormal bulging of the anterior fontanelle that denotes that there is increased intracranial tension or if the anterior fontanelle is depressed it denotes dehydration and this site is used for withdrawal of blood or the intravenous transfusion of fluid or drugs because the superior sagittal sinus is seen just beneath this from the lateral angle of the anterior fontanelle a needle can be introduced downwards and laterally to reach the lateral ventricle of brain 
and also during parturition you can determine the position of fetal head in vertex presentation by pervaginal examination so these are some of the importances of the anterior fontanelle the next question is identify the foramen pointed with blue arrow and mention the structures passing through it so this is a favorite question and i have already discussed that when we discussed about the middle cranial fossa so this foramen is foramen ovale the structures passing through the foramen ovale you can remember by the mnemonic male that is ovale male structures m a l e that means mandibular nerve accessory meningeal artery lesser petrosal nerve and emissary vein So we will have a look at other two foramen that, is, that are present near to the foramen or veil. The one that is seen above is foramen rotundum and that transmits maxillary nerve. Whereas the one that is seen below is the foramen spinosum and this transmits three structures that is 3M. These are middle meningeal artery, meningeal branch of mandibular nerve which is also known as nervous spinosus and then posterior division of middle meningeal vein so the order usually the order is foramen rotundum foramen ovale and foramen spinosa now the last question for this session is identify the bone and the marked area marked by green arrow and name one ligament attached to it and also mention one applied importance so you can identify this as this is a second cervical vertebra or the axis vertebra and the marked area is the odontoid process or dense of the axis and ligament or ligaments attached to this are the to the tip of the odontoid process you have got the apical ligament and that is attached to the anterior margin of the foramen magnum whereas you also have got alar ligaments there are two alar ligaments and they diverge from the dense and are anchored to the lateral margins of foramen magnum and this epical ligament that is a, a, which is attached to the tip of dense is considered to be a remnant of the notochord now one applied importance of this region is that in case of death by judicial hanging there is fracture of the dense of axis or you can say there is a rupture of the transverse ligament of atlas so what will happen during a uh, judicial hanging the atlas is dislocated from the axis and it compresses the spinal cord with fatal outcome so that is the importance of the second cervical vertebra and the dense of the axis so i hope uh, these questions were useful for you we'll come up with further questions in coming sessions thank you